diminishing returns. I'm Adam Annis. <laughs> I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Wait, where, where are you going there, little buddy? I got buddy? stuck out there. I went to go take my scorecard back and I got kind of stuck. Right, right. Um, jazz advice coming at you. Coming at you today, sponsored by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com to start your free trial and check out all of our jazz courses. Yes. I want to direct people's attention, especially to our Open Studio Pro program. Go to openstudiojazz.com slash pro. And just a reminder, this is not for pros. These are for people that want to practice like a pro. That's right. Want to become a pro. Practice with pros. Practice with pros. Practice with each other. Um, it's really one of our most exciting programs. We don't talk about it enough, but it's on my mind because we were in New York City last week yeah, and we yeah, got yeah. to meet up with some of our beloved uh, New York City area, actually all the way up into New England, yeah. uh, uh, some folks came down, Open Studio Pro members for that beautiful coffee and just to... It's an incredible community. It really yeah, is. Sign so. up today. Uh, Peter, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about what we kind of played. Did we Did we actually play? Yeah. yeah. Diminished shiz it. Yeah, we like diminished to stuff. Diminished stuff. Yeah. You know, it could be chords, could be... Well, um, specifically one shape. Yes. Which, which is, I just learned this morning is yeah. called the unicorn. Corn? We call unicorn it, cord? The unit we call it around Open Studio Pro. We call yeah. it the unicorn cord because of the shape of it. Yeah. Uh, but it's a very useful shape that you see all over the place. Exactly. Yeah. And so I kind of know this thing, but I'm really interested to get your take. We're going to do this a little bit in real time. Sure. But I'll just sort of start out. Should we cordy it up? All right. So this is sort of my foundation for it. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Okay. Can we start there? So Here flat. you've got a... You got a C sharp or D flat, E, G, and C. So this is like a C sharp diminished triad. Yes. With a C on the top. With the major seventh. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, this, so this one's based off of... Which is not really a major seventh, but go ahead. Oh, it's not? Well, not technically. Go okay, ahead. well, I want to learn. I'm here the to learn. Eighth, I'm not just here to teach. I'm here to learn. Yeah. So we're going with a D flat whole half diminished scale, right? That's right. Which is not to muddle the waters, but to me, it simplifies it Wait. to think... Yeah, the whole half. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But that's the same as the C. So half whole. Just real quick, technically there's one diminished scale and it's the whole half. And then mm. when you use that on a dominant chord, the easy way to find it is to think about it in half whole, but it's still just the whole half. Okay. In other words, if we're if we're talking about here like um C7, right? That would be what we'd use for this. Like a C7. Right, exactly. So you would be using that. You yep. would maybe think of it as either the B flat or the D flat or the E whole half, or E diminished scale or the G diminished scale. Interesting. Right. So I kind of generally think about this as like a half step above whole, whole right. uh, diminished. So D flat whole half diminished. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, but some people start it from C, they call it the half whole. That's all good. Yes. It just gets a little Same confusing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So so we've got C7, yep. but we've got it, building it like as terms of the shape, I think about it, and look, these things, and this is where you get into like th theory versus reality versus, you know, perception, conception. But like, I think about it as that D flat triad, um, diminished, diminished triad with the major seventh. Yeah. Or you're building up off of that diminished fifth up a perfect fourth. Well, this is why we call this the unicorn shape. Yeah. Because you've got this little, this little block of minor thirds down here. Yeah. And then you got a fourth. And yeah, it's like a, little, a horn. A little horn. It's like a horn, horn. on top why of you a little body. Horn. I like it. Yeah. And now, and then how do you think about it? Do you think about it as three plus one, like left hand, right hand, or two plus two, or one plus three in terms of left hand versus right hand playing it? Oh, I'm almost always playing this with just my right hand, unless mm -hmm. it's part of a bigger voicing. Right. So, yeah, I think about this as just either my right hand or sometimes just, I don't really play this a lot with just my left hand. I mean, I do actually. Yeah, like, I do this one a lot with, the, with just the left hand. Yeah, but this shape is really useful. So, again, it's. A diminished triad, C sharp, E, G, and then a C on top, a perfect fourth above that. Now tell me about why it's not the major seventh. Well, it is It is a major seventh from the octave of D flat. Right. Because it's based off of this eight note scale. Yeah. Right? That's not really a seventh. The seventh is B flat. You know what I mean? Right. The diminished seventh. The diminished seventh. Right, right, yeah. right, right. I actually don't know what you would call that intervolically. The diminished octave. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe the diminished octave. But, but when we do think about it in terms of C7, it, you could also think about it as that octave. And sometimes when I'll, like, so you see how we've got that, the, the four notes, and then if you add it in, almost block chorded by adding that C. 
So I've got C and D flat in the left hand and then a C triad, major triad in the right hand. Another way to kind of hear it and think about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that can be interesting because you could be like, like playing around with the chromatic, just that C triad going up and down. Yeah. So let's talk about where this C comes from. Yeah. Right? So you mentioned the whole half diminished scale where you've got a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a half step, and a whole step, and then you're back at D flat with a half step. So you've got D flat, E flat, E natural, G flat, G, A, B flat, and C. Yeah. Now, if we skip a note of those, you get this, right? Yeah. You get this diminished seventh. Chord. Fully diminished. D flat, E, G, and B flat, fully diminished. The other leftover notes from the scale, this is a D flat diminished seventh. The other leftover notes are an E flat diminished seventh. Yeah. Now look at one of what one of those notes is. It's a C. Mm. So when you're building diminished chords, like if you have a, a D flat diminished or a C sharp diminished, you know, you can do your your D flat diminished. You can add extensions from that E flat diminished. Mm. So this C is one of those. You could also add A. You could yep. also add, you could actually do the whole diminished seventh. It's called the double diminished. It gets played all the time. It's a beautiful sounding. Herbie Hancock so. loves it with all his heart and soul. Right? It's a beautiful way to add very crunchy extensions on your diminished. And this unicorn shape is the microcosm of that, right? Yep. This shape also, Peter. It's kind has, of the minimum little, those four notes, sort of the minimum unicorn in a way. That's right. That's right. And you can take this and you can move this up mi mi minor thirds, right, to all of these diminished with the unicorn. And they sound great. And they have a, a myriad of uses as well. It's not yeah. used just for diminished. It's also used for dominant chords, but we can talk about a few of those for sure. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, sometimes you'll hear people, whether I'd say taking it through the cycle, the diminished cycle, that's just like what you just said. Just That's just, sometimes people are like, oh, I don't know how to do that. So kind of, it's moving up and down minor thirds, baby. Yeah. And the reason it's the diminished cycle is because it's moving through that fully diminished, diminished seventh, right? So that's the first one. And this is a good way to practice them too, I think, and get them in your hands. But that diminished triad with that major third on top, Peter, you know, the first way you might think about using this would be like something like. Mm -hmm. So this is misty. Going to start on an E flat diminished, right? So you got E flat, G flat, A, yep. and then D. And D yep. is the melody. That's the exact same voice that we were just looking at. You can resolve. Like that, the tonic diminished, E flat diminished, it, it begs to resolve to E flat major seven. Yep. Right? The G flat and the A want to go up to. Yep. G and B flat. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think the way you can think about this, one of the ways to think about it and to hear it especially is D over E flat, D major seven. Remember we talked about before the That's C right. major tried in that first inversion? That's exactly right. Right. And you'll actually see this sometimes in charts written as like B over C. Yeah. Or D over E flat. Like uh, spring is here. Um, yeah. That's a B over C, right? Very common way to do a diminished with that major, we'll call it a major seven. Right. Just put in the comments what that's technically called, music theorists, theory exactly. nerds. I'm not really sure what that is. But it's such a beautiful voicing. Now, this isn't the only way you can use that because you, you, I think you chose that C sharp with the C on top for a reason. Yeah, so I mean, I think that we can think about like, and this gets a little bit maybe more away from theory and it's just sort of practical usage once you get this shape. And you can chromatically move it around, but also up in minor thirds is the way to go here. Yeah, but maybe combining it still with that diminished scale when you're like, you know, like the same way you would do like any other, it's really kind of a, like a jazz arpeggio in which you're bebopping out with scales combined with this unicorn chord. Um, but I would say, Think about, like, because there's so much tension in it, mainly because of that major seventh, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, what does this sound like with different root notes that it would it would give some similar tension, either exactly as it is or with just, like, a little bit of movement on the inside? So, yeah, C7 for sure, because you've got, when you start moving up, look at that, you got a flat nine, now you've got the sharp nine, now you got the flat nine and the sharp 11. And then you're back to the, the flat nine. But also, what if we put an A at the bottom? Yeah. Now we've got all that. 
And it's, it has the same use as those four. You're exactly. just moving that shape up in minor thirds, which as we know for diminished harmony is the key, right? Yeah. They all align in uh, minor thirds. You could do it then for G flat. Yeah, exactly. Now we're moving, we're going through the diminished cycle in right. the, with the root. E flat as well. Yeah. And the way you can kind of hear these, like it should be easy to hear the resolution in some interesting places. So we go... So like F minor 11. Yeah, yeah. But if we go A, we maybe are going to, you know, be up to B flat major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if we go um, G flat, um, was that G flat 13 flat nine? And maybe to B major six nine. Now I'm just throwing one in the same way like we did at the beginning of Misty. There's the tension there, so there's a possibility for some interesting... Um, releases. What's one more interesting one we can? Yeah, beautiful. That kind of a thing. Another common use you might see for this D flat diminished with the C on top is like in the key of B flat. I just did one there accidentally mm. on the F, but key of B flat. If you're doing like a three six two five, so the flat three diminished. Yeah, like yeah, this D minor seven to the D flat diminished. Right. Going to C minor. This is a very common thing, especially in older right. music. It's and a that's great more like kind of it. passing tension, right? For passing sure. through. And then there's other ways you can use. So again, this diminished shape with that C on top, the unicorn shape is what we call it. Uh, you know, we're borrowing from the other diminished chord in our diminished scale. And there's Did other ways you up? can do this. Is that what? proprietary? Did what? we make that up? Unicorn shape? Yeah. That's proprietary. Thank you. Yeah. It's just what we started yeah. calling an open studio because when you write it out, it looks like a little unicorn. But you can do this. So if we look at, um, let's look at, at this shape. I love this shape here. Mm. So here we've got an F diminished, fully diminished with the E added. And I'm going to do this on a block chord here, Peter. So we have F, A flat, B, D, and E, right? So it's very similar to what you have. We're just going to add that D in as well. Yep. If we take this and we move everything and make it an open voicing, we have this shape, right? F, B, E, A flat, and D. Now, on my Magic Voicing system course that I have, this is what we call the diminished set. Because these are great not only for like F diminished, A flat diminished, B diminished, and D diminished. These also work for like G, G 13, flat, flat nine. nine. Uh, it also works for obviously D flat. You can alter the thing. Sharp nine. Yeah. It can work nine. also for E and B flat, but it's a little bit crunchier for those. I think it's good. But it's a beautiful voicing that you can use to take it's five note voicing that's spread out. Yeah. Like that's what, these are all this kind of open unicorn, we might call it. This. That's all that voicing, that, you know, you've got the F diminished, and then you've got that E, which is the unicorn note, the yep. horn, in yep. the, right in the middle. It's a beautiful shape. And yeah, and I love the way you demonstrated those, and I want folks to always remember, it's like, how are you going to resolve it? Where are you going to play before it? What is the progression? Because it's so easy. It's not easy, but uh, we don't want to get stuck too long. I mean, look, as we're learning these shapes, we have to get them in our hands, but we want to immediately being able to apply them at least to being resolving somewhere, these kinds of chords, as opposed to thinking of them as this kind of static thing and just moving them around chromatically or within the diminished cycle. Can we demonstrate circle. a little bit just like a, an A section of rhythm changes? Let's do two A sections in a, in okay. a row. I'm going to do a lot. I'm going to do all of the dominant voicings. I'm going to use a diminished. So for like the G7, I'm going to use the B diminished or right. D diminished. For the F7s, I'm going to use the E flat diminished, the A diminished okay. or whatever you want to call it. The first time through, I'm only going to use the four notes of the diminished seven. Yep. The second time through, I'm going to do these unicorn voicings that use the notes of the other, like that use the extensions. Listen to the difference of the first time and the second. I'll give you a little bass line, my friend. Ready? One, two, three, and. Nothing wrong. Sounds good. But wouldn't you rather? Now here's with some more crunch to it. Hear the crunch?
That yeah. just that extra note that's outside of the diminished seventh chord, that's from the other diminished. Yeah, sounds so good. Other diminished or other dimension. A <laughs> little bit of both. And then if you want to kind of play around with it, like on the F, like kind of next level on your own. So, well, I'm, I'm going to take it down to like building off of this, the dominant seven. So like for the F7, starting at E flat, unicorn, mm -hmm. unicorn chord. Yeah. And then the you're great thing. Yeah. We're going to, can we cordy it back up again? Are we, are we, are we in a post cordy society? We're in, we're in oh, we're back in cordy. Cord so there it is, right? F7. So one little shift. Still four notes. I know before we added that in, I believe. But what if we shift it up here? This is sort of next level. We're going to have to come up with a name with this. I love this one. So here we've got the fourth. Perfect fourth is on top. Now the perfect fourth yeah, in the right. middle. Two minor thirds. That's that's a straight up Peter Martin voice thing right there. Is that it? Yeah. Is that it? we got to give it a better name than that. But the exciting thing with this is like, how does it sound different? And then if you go sharp nine, little variations on that inner movement. Cool, man. I love this shape. It's, we, I love it. One of my favorite shapes. We teach at Open Studio Pro. Yeah, come check it out. Yeah. Till next time. You'll hear it. Okay. <laughs>